Hello and welcome to Join News Prime with me, Anna Smenu. Coming up in this package, as government makes a sudden U-turn on running to the IMF to save the economy, we dissect how many times Ghana has been to the register of the Britain Woods Institution for bailouts and how much we have raked in since 1966. We are not going to the IMF. Whatever we do, we are not. We will not go to the IMF today. We will not go to IMF tomorrow. I feel sad. Ghana card applicants plead for more time to link their bank accounts with their card as a policy limit in the operation of bank accounts in Ghana takes effect today. We'll hear from an aged pensioner who has tried unsuccessfully to get her card registered. Every has a almost been called two weeks time in bra. It's going to be a also in this package, eight private technical and vocational institutes collapse due to the free TVET policy. We are not beneficiaries of it. And that is what is uh, crippling our uh, growth. We are not getting the students to train. About eight of these private institutions that have closed down completely. Hello again, thanks for choosing us. Now, Ghana is finally headed to the International Monetary Fund. The decision communicated by government Friday comes after a long debate on the need and when to apply for the support. In the last decade, any program with the IMF has generated controversy and more overtly uh, has become a political football. Here are some sound bites from key political actors about Ghana's bailout program with the IMF since 2015 not going to the IMF. Whatever we do, we are not. The consequences are there. We are a proud nation. We have the resources. We have the capacity. Don't let anybody tell you. Actually, I tell our members that are with high level of debt, don't wait. Don't wait. Move towards uh, uh, programs uh, that would help you protect your economy. Because if when capital leaves and nothing comes uh, to, to guarantee uh, stability, uh, then countries may find themselves in a very, very tough uh, spot. Mr. Speaker, the Yi levy is also going to help with the fiscal consolidation effort and reduce the debt levels of our country. And that also means that we are going to see an improved economic ratings and not returning to the International Monetary Fund which is the only solution our friends on the other side have always preferred. Why don't you go to the IMF? Go to the IMF. We have shown that we have alternatives to building the economy of this country without resorting to conditionalities that will be imposed on this country. We will not go to the IMF today. We will not go to IMF tomorrow. And we are not going as long as the NPP remains in power. But we all do know that microeconomic stability is not an end in itself. It's a means to an end. And even sustaining that microeconomic stability and building on that, we fail to do that. And that is why almost every three years and some few months, we've had to go to the IMF. And the bulk of that is, is from the fiscal side, borrowing. Why wouldn't the IMF ask you to put a hold on your borrowing if that is the, the, the problem, right? And right now, because interest, expense, and compensation of employees take virtually everything, you are looking at getting to the point where even to pay interest on your debt, you may have to borrow. That's my problem. That is nothing like, that is, that is more or less like a Ponzi scheme, right? Well, Prof, it's completely I'll, I'll... avoidable, completely avoidable if we had done the right things and heeded to good advice from our own people. Sure, sure. And I, I believe that uh, a lot of what we need to do, I mean, Ghanaians, you know, in Ghana and outside Ghana can tell you they can analyze the problems and, and tell you exactly what we need to do. And, and, and for example, when I said we need a fiscal responsibility act to stop this type of reckless expenditure to control all of that, the Minister of Finance said, no, I didn't know what I was talking about. Now the IMF has come and said the same thing. They're like, oh, fine, yeah, we think we need it. We are going to do it. Uh, and, and, and I think it's, 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 it's rather sad, but I agree with you that I think if there is a good faith effort made, you know, at, at everybody, you know, from academia to the business community to industry can have, 
you know, their contribution to how things should be. And I think that our governments need to be open to ideas. A lot of our problems can be solved with ideas, not with money. The federal administration knows this too well, but political posturing, empty grandstanding, and a morbid fear of their own pedestrian politicking around less serious problems of the recent past have immobilized and frozen them into action, inaction which continues to run our economy aground and worsening the living conditions of our people by the day. And with this, I'm referring to their criticism of my administration when we decided to go to the IMF. They said it's only lazy governments that go to the IMF. And I mean, the words they said in that past have come to haunt them. So one of the reasons why they're afraid to go to the IMF is that what they said in the past will uh, follow them. IMF, uh, are we going? If we go, uh, NDC will celebrate as a defeat for the MPP. Is that That's a, a political uh, dimension. Yes, but are we getting ready to IMF so, bailout? So, so look so. at just a political dimension that if you go to the IMF, the NDC will celebrate. But no, we haven't reached a point where that determination can be made. Because we are now going through the process of looking at the numbers. You are yeah. far behind. You are years and months, months behind. Those people should double up and follow us and know where we are. We have left them behind. Well, external forces have an impact on all economies. The Ghana is not excluded. Our neighbor, Cote d'Ivoire, exports pretty much the same commodities that we are exporting. In fact, we now have oil, and they are trying to, to, to get oil uh, uh, as well. But why is it that the external forces haven't collapsed the Ivorian economy? <laughs> we are just next door to them. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Ivorian economy is booming. And their budget is, they had to have another budget just because they had more money than they had budgeted. We are now going for bailout. It's a contrast. <laughs> They've told all their communicators, anytime you mention Mahama or NDC, say incompetent. They say here about me and say incompetent Mahama administration, incompetent. You've never held any responsibility anywhere near presidency before. You don't know what it is like to be president. So, boy, I will take that word from before or from Rawlings because they've been there before. All of you guys have never ever come near the presidency. You know what it is to be a president? And you stand and say, incompetent Mahama administration. Incompetent Mahama administration. What do you know about competence? All of them, in the offices they occupy, they should show us what competence they displayed. When I look at the economic management team, it is quite clearly a fantastic team. Professor Jambafo, Dr. Akutose, Dr. Afriye Akutu, Honorable Alan Chiremanting, Boachi Ejaku, Ken Oforiata, Senior Minister Yao Osafu Mafu. What a solid team. In fact, can anyone remember the NDC economic management team? <laughs> I am sure. I'm sure. They themselves cannot remember who their economic management team was. I hear some people argue that we should go to IMF. Any government that goes to IMF has failed. And we haven't failed for the good works that we have done in this country. You should applaud Ken Oforiata. He's not well, but still, yesterday I heard them in war. All in the name of the country. Ah, Sengo, we have indeed gone for an IMF bailout. Yes. How do you feel? You feel vindicated? Not really. I feel sad. 
So those are the sound bites uh, in the last few years about Ghana and the IMF program. But how many times has Ghana been on the IMF's register for bailouts? And how much have we raked in so far as a country uh, by signing on to these programs since 1966? Well, Isaac J is a data analyst with our research tech, and he joins me uh, in the studio to give us some more uh, figures on this. Uh, Kofi, how many times have we been there? Well, as there you have it, 16 times in 16 separate fiscal years, mm. Ghana has visited the IMF. It was starting right from 1966 after the overthrow of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. That was May 17, 1966. And we applied for an IMF program of um, you know, $36 million. And we were given $31 million you know, after the program. So these are the tallest of IMF programs that we've had in this period that I'm talking about, right, from 1966 to the last one we have in uh, 50, 2015, that was August, um, April. Um, April 3rd in 2015, that was when we had our last IMF program where the agreed amount that IMF was supposed to give us was $664, $664 million, of which at the end we were able to withdraw only $531 million out of the $664 million that was approved. Okay. Now, take the IMF as a supermarket that countries, you know, um, um, banks go in for, central banks go there to shop. Now, the IMF has at least nine different programs that when you go there, you can qualify for one of them. And if you look at the list, you realize that Ghana, we, we've been patronizing at least four, four different programs. So the first one being the standby arrangement, which we started in 1966, We've also been patronizing, you know, the infamous extended credit facilities, which is usually for um, low-income countries. Now, in 2015, when, you know, Seth Tekpe was finance minister, he received a letter from the World Bank or the IMF saying that Ghana has now attained middle status, meaning that when we borrow, we are going to pay interest on them. So I doubt if Ghana will actually qualify for an ECF because it's usually for, for, for um, low-income countries. Now Ghana is a middle-income country. Now we've been looking at the numbers. The 16 IMF programs that we are talking about, how much has government rigged in since 1966? So we did the math, and we realized government has rigged in a total of 2.5 billion Ghana, a billion US dollars from the 16 program that they have actually gone to the IMF to subscribe to. Now let's look at the genesis of this whole problem where going to the IMF started. That was when the finance minister actually read the 2022 budget in November. And he projected that Ghana was going to spend an amount of 137 billion Ghana cities and raise an amount of 100.5 billion cities. Mm. The big gap was there. That's the deficit to be financed. We asked ourselves, how are we going to finance you know, this almost 40 billion um, Ghana cities as deficit? Now, we blame this situation on COVID and then also the financial sector cleanup. But this is the amount of money that, according to the finance minister, we picked this information from the 2021 media budget review, page 99. Okay. This is the amount of money governments raked in as support during the COVID era in 2020. 19.3 billion Ghana cities in 2020. Now, if you move to the same page, 99, on the media budget review that I'm referring to, okay. 2021 budget had a support of 6.29 billion Ghana cities. And this is in Ghana's own media budget review. We are not the one, you know, bringing out these figures. It's in the budget. You can refer to it in page 99 of the media budget review, 2021. If you add the two, it means that 2020 and 2021, Ghana rigged in a total of 25.68 billion cities, you know, of income as a result of COVID. As a result of COVID. Exactly. Now, let's do the breakdown. If we convert this 25 point, um, you know, 58 billion Ghana cities that we rigged in as a result of COVID using, you know, today's um, uh, exchange rate, this means that the 25 billion cities we're talking about is somewhere around 3.1 billion US dollars. And since 1966 to 2015, Ghana has received a total of 2.5 billion cities 
from the IMF. So, so NS, you can do your own mm. comparison here. So you're saying that we got more from COVID-19 mm -hmm. in terms of support between 2020 and 2021 exactly. that we've ever received from the IMF for all the 16 programs that's that we've, the, we've, we've, we've applied for. Yeah, that's according to the finance, uh, the finance ministry's own program, um, you know, um, budget document, media budget review document. We compare the figures from there and you can do the comparison. From 1966 to 2015, 2.5 billion CDs. COVID-19, 2020 and 2021 support 3.1 billion dollars. dollars. And, and that's actually the difference. Now, this is where the whole thing started. We've also been comparing the 2015 scenario when we went to the IMF and the 2022 scenario, what we have currently. You know, Setekme has actually disputed the fact that um, debt to GDP ratio was not somewhere around 66.5 billion, um, you know, Sorry. percent. But this is what we got from the official documents from the ministry's own summary data. So we go according to this. As at the time Ghana went to the IMF in 2015, this was the exchange rate. The CD, as of April, May, had lost 19.9% of its value to the dollar. Currently, Today we are doing 15.8. Mm. And if you look at inflation by May in 2015, that was somewhere around 16.8%. Currently, we are doing... 27.6%, you know, you can see the difference. We also look at the gross international reserve by, you know, April. This is the best measure because this will tell you your international reserve and the amount of import cover that you can do in a certain period. 4.8 billion CDs as of 2015, and it could afford a strip a slightly a little above, you know, a three months of import cover. Currently, we are doing 8.3 billion Ghana cities, but it can still just afford us 3.7, you know, months of import cover. You can also do the debt to GDP ratio. We've been talking about the rising desktop of Ghana and other things. Now, NS, Ghana has agreed to sign on to an IMF program. Now, look at this. This is the 2021 budget. Look at government's flagship program. And this is the weight of government's flagship program on our expenditure. 6.9 billion Ghana cities. You have in there free SHS. You have in there, um, you know, planting for food and job. You have in there one district, one factory. You have also in there railway development, fish landing sites. Mm. Now we are school feeding exactly. program is also there. It's also there, and there's also leap. It's also well. there. Then we can also talk about you know the the the, the nurses and teacher trainee allowances, allowances yeah. are also there. So we ask ourselves. When we finally sign on to the IMF program, which of these programs will be affected? Will be affected. Well, that's what we should uh, look forward to. Those are the questions we should be uh, asking to the people who Absolutely. matter. And I guess we'll find out with time, uh, eventually, when that decision is made. If the IMF actually uh, agrees to this uh, application uh, for a program. Let's see how that pans out, Kofi. Thank you very much. But the minority in Parliament says government's decision to seek IMF support to rescue the economy is refreshing but late. Minority spokesperson on finance, Dr. Kezel Atuforsen, described government's handling of the economy as horrible, arguing they had no option but to seek the support of the fund. Parliamentary correspondent, Kweku Asante has more. During the heated periods of the debate in Parliament before the approval of the controversial e-levy, government was clear, either pay e-levy or Ghana goes to the IMF. Mr. Speaker, the e-levy is also going to help with the fiscal consolidation effort and reduce the debt levels of our country. And that also means that we are going to see an improved economic ratings and not returning to the International Monetary Fund. Indeed, Finance Minister Ken Oforiata had been clear within that same period that the country was not going to seek IMF support. But despite all this, government has begun engagement with the International Monetary Fund for an economic program. Ranking member on the Finance Committee, Dr. Kisela Tofosin says the move is welcoming, but way behind schedule. Uh, I, I saw it coming long ago. I know the government intended to evade what is obvious but the reality is obviously um, it's clear that they had no other choice than to do an IMF pro program. Overall I think it's refreshing but the simplest thing is to authorize an IMF program. The most difficult one is getting a program that unfortunately as a result of the fact that the government decided to delay 
in taking such an important decision it has cost the nation and it will cost us even more going forward he also described government's expectation that the e-levy was going to be an alternative to the imf as short-sighted government's decision to seek an imf support sent shockwaves through parliament especially on the back of Finance Minister Ken Oforiate's insistence that government was not going to seek support from the fund. Parliament, you could see MPs passing their phones to each other on both the minority and majority sides ostensibly to break the news to each other. In the coming days, this will generate a lot of discussions and MPs will have a greater say in what kind of deal government gets from the IMF. They were trying to create by this candidate decision by government through a statement issued Honorable, by the Minister Honorable, of Information. Deputy it's as so though they know nothing about IMF. Honorable you have been to the IMF. Mr. Speaker, you Honorable were not confronted by an international crisis. You went to Honorable IMF because of this money. Why are you not telling us that we are going to IMF? When you moved, Mr. Speaker, grant me the space. Mr. Speaker, when they were in government, there was no international crisis. You went to IMF. The deputy leader may have aspiration to be leader, but not aspiration to be minister for finance and to be making formal announcement on behalf of the minister for finance on IMF. Ghana will not go to IMF, unquote, says Ken Ufuriata. What are you seeking to do? <laughs> to formally announce to this house that there is now a school prophet in the IMF. The minority now says government will not get their support to pass any loan agreements that are not project specific in accordance with directive from former president John Mahama. I have said that the problems we are in is the fact that we, are, we have an unsustainable debt. Any attempt for us to support the government to take another decision to add on additional commercial debt without showing clear signs of building buffers to repay, it means we are participating in the destruction of the economy. His Excellency John Mahama was right. And, and I commend him for such a bold decision. And for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a three line whip on us to make sure we do not participate in the destruction of the Ghanaian economy. Meanwhile, Minority Spokesperson on Whiten House and Vincent Opon Asamoa says he will be surprised if his side does not start processes to remove the Finance Minister, Ken Ofirata, through a vote of censure. The Doma West MP is confident the NDC will get support from NPP MPs. Uh, who he says are disappointed in the minister's performance but cannot voice it publicly. So disappointed in the minority if we don't start a process to ensure that this guy is booted out of office. I know Nanado would naturally not uh, reshuffle his cabinet. But for this, at least there was a firm promise to Ghanaians that we should give them e levy. Once e-levy is passed, then there's no way we'll be going to IMF for any uh, uh, bailout. But here we are, e-levy, we have gotten it, and they are telling us we are going to IMF. And this is a very good grounds for us to start impeachment process, so that this man should... I... What exactly has he done wrong? My brother, how can you make this huge promise to Ghanaians, and we have given you what you want, and I don't, I don't know, you are not even humble enough to come and apologize. So if Nanado doesn't want this man to go, then I expect MPP to turn around and tell the government in the face that if he came for his family and friends, he's destroying their party. What? Well, it's now time for John News Editorial, and today we focus on government's sharp U-turn to head to the IMF. The E-Levy is perhaps one of the most controversial bills ever laid before Parliament. This is the bill that turned Ghana's Parliament into a boxing ring. Many Ghanaians complained and criticized the e-levy, insisting the government would reverse the gains made on the mobile money front. Ghanaians cited examples of countries where taxes on mobile money had caused a reduction in the volume of transactions. 
For example, Tanzania taxed mobile money in July last year and peer-to-peer -peer transactions dropped by 38% from 30 million to 18 million per month. But the listening NPP government decided to ignore all concerns the public expressed. It seemed they were ready to kill the goose that laid the golden eggs. It was almost as if the tax was the cure to all of Ghana's economic problems. I think that is something that is very, it's not so, and the level, it's not Ghana, it's the only country that has something like a mobile, a, ta a digital tax. Many, 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 many countries, they will not like it. People never like taxes. I don't know any, any group of people, especially businesses, when taxes are brought to them that like it. I'm happy that the House has finally found it possible to pass the E-Levy Bill. I believe strongly the levy is going to make a significant contribution to revenue mobilization and the management of, our nas of the national economy. The E-Levy is also going to help with the fiscal consolidation effort and reduce the debt levels of our country. We are going to see an improved economic ratings and not returning to the International Monetary Fund, which is the only solution our friends on the other side have always preferred. Why don't you go to the IMF? Go to the IMF. We have shown that we have alternatives to building the economy of this country without resorting to conditionalities that will be imposed on this country. We will not go to the IMF today. We will not go to IMF tomorrow. And we are not going as long as the NPP remains in power. So they passed the tax into law and the GRE enthusiastically started implementation. In spite of numerous technical and operational problems, the Revenue Authority announced their excitement at a yield of 1 million cities a day from the largest vendor on the very first day. One of the charging entities which own more than 70% of the population, we saw his tax bill mm -hmm. and I started smiling and clapping oh, because sorry, it was sorry, good. Sorry. Uh, how, <laughs> much, how, much, how much was it? It's in excess of um, 1 million okay. for just one um, charging entity. Now, do the maths. One million cities a day for even a whole year would only bring in 365 million cities. But the tax was expected to yield some 4.5 billion Ghana cities. The GRA has stopped being so forthcoming with information about how much money they are collecting these days. They say it's early days yet. Government, of course, was optimistic that the collections would go up. Enter Imani. The think tank says that their research shows that 83% of Ghanaians have changed their mobile money habits because of the e-levy. Then we saw tweets from the president's cousin, Gabi Asari Ochiridakon, that mobile money is not generating enough revenue. At this point, was anyone surprised government had been warned, hadn't they? Several times, in fact. Then the GRA announced again that the mobile money merchants' accounts will be taxed. Now, this has sparked a new onslaught of complaints by the merchants, but government is still not listening. Joy News would like to share a profound quote by the former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe with the President and the managers of our economy. Shinzo Abe said, when I served as Prime Minister last time, I failed to prioritize my agenda. I was eager to complete everything at once and ended my administration in failure. After resigning, for six years, I traveled across the nation simply to listen. We know the president and his team have no challenge with traveling across the country, but we sincerely hope that they are not as challenged when it comes to listening. Because the people are telling you in clear, unambiguous language that things are hard. We are saddled with unprecedented debt and our credit rating is plummeting. Nobody on the market is willing to lend to us at realistic rates. And as a nation, we are already spending more money on servicing our debts than any other item on our budget. Experts started to call on government to run to the IMF. The finance minister and other appointees rubbished this advice. Today, the president has chosen the IMF option. After resisting the obvious 
and delaying the inevitable for far too long, the president has finally taken the decision he should have taken months ago. Now, the thing about being in an IMF program is that you can no longer argue that you have been managing the economy well. <laughs> Not with a straight face, anyway. But we are still dozens of decisions away from being out of the woods. Here at Joy News, we are calling on the president to put pride aside and apologize to the people of Ghana for not listening to us. In order to retain our confidence in his stewardship, he must not sell unrealistic optimism. He must honestly manage our expectations. He must get it right this time and take the tough decisions that will steer us back to economic recovery. The listening government must remember how to listen before they are forced to. Thanks for staying with us here on Joy News Prime. Now, the introduction of free TVET has led to the collapse of some private technical and vocational institutes. That's according to the principal of the Presbyterian College of Skills Development, Gerhard Dogo, and he disclosed this at, uh, that about eight institutions in the Ablekuma Central Municipal Assembly have closed down as a result of low patronage. He describes the situation as worrying and wants government to intervene. He joins us via Zoom uh, for some more on this. Thank you very much, Mr. Dogo, uh, for joining us here on Joy News Prime. So, for the senior high schools, the private ones, uh, they say that they had some agreement with government, or at least there was a promise uh, by government to give them a certain percentage of the pupils who are transitioning from junior high school to senior high school. Do you have any such agreement with government? Uh, good evening, listeners. Formerly, before the inception of the uh, free you know, high school policy, most private institutions were also on the computerized uh, uh, placement system. But since the free SHS policy was introduced, mm. almost all, uh, I may say, every private institution was removed from the list. So there wasn't any uh, agreement between us and the government for placement of learners from BEC or SHS. Mm. And these eight institutions that you say have collapsed, are they all within the Ablekuma municipality? They are all within the Kanishi uh, within the Kanishi uh, catchment area. Okay. Uh, but and, a greater and, number and, of them are within the Abnikuma Central. Okay. And, and the collapse yeah. is simply as a result of low patronage, nothing else. You're saying that every other factor is, because, is holding constant. Uh, the patronage is actually the issue. Yes, it's because of uh, low patronage of uh, the institutions. Mm. You have to pay staff and uh, pay utilities and other uh, logistical uh, uh, issues. But because they are not getting the numbers, they cannot uh, actually foot the bills and the uh, salaries of workers. Have you moved to engage government on this issue? At many forums, we discuss these issues with government. Uh, but uh, as of now, there hasn't been any fruitful outcome. Mm. Do, do you mind disclosing which firms and which, uh, with which individuals or government officials? Well, I would say all TVET institutions, are uh, many of us are registered with uh, CTVET, that is Commission for Technical Vocational Education and Training. So they are aware, anytime we meet, we raise our concerns about uh, what is happening to private institutions throughout the country. Mm. Well, we'll have to leave it here, Mr. Lugo, but I'm grateful that you could join us. Uh, we'll find out what happens to these uh, uh, private institutions going forward uh, when we get the deputy minister in charge of TVET subsequently. This is Join News Prime. Let's do some other stories. Now, in scores of Ghanaians who, are, who still don't have their Ghana cards are pleading for more time to link their bank account 
with a card. Government's policy requiring bank account holders to use only the Ghana card as the source of identification took effect today with some persons unable to withdraw funds from the accounts. At the Elwak Stadium in Accra, where many are still in the process of obtaining their Ghana cards, there's a plea for a deadline for the deadline to be extended. My colleague Kojo Brace was there in our report. Last two years, not three years, not me year, uh, Ghana card, you know. Also, it was, I mean, to me, not to, in the year, dropping, 50, 60, 5 cities, 6 cities. Because I answer no more, so more, they are called news agency. Madam Theresa Kofi, a pensioner who has been struggling to get a Ghana card for the past one year. She couldn't hold back her tears whilst narrating her ordeal in the past year to me. According to her, just a misspelling of her name has caused her so much. She has to shuttle between her home and several other places just to lay hands on her card. Madam Theresa tells me now that banks are only allowing people to use Ghana card as identities, she fears how she will feed because she can't lay hands on her meager pensioner's salary as a result of her not getting a Ghana card. So today at the Elwak Sports Stadium, Ma Theresa has come to try and get it. But she says while struggling to get the card, she fell. There are likely many people of a kind who are struggling to live, more likely even struggling just to have access to their Ghana cards so they can link that to their account to have access to their mega salaries. Anthony and Nelson are young people who have been struggling for some time now to get their cards. We've been here for a week. Some have been here like uh, since 2019. Some have not even received their card. Then you are telling us that you are ending the process today. Like it doesn't make sense. So today, no, by all means, no, no, everybody is not, will, will not be able to do it right now. I did it in 2019. You couldn't do it for me. Now you're asking me to pay money before getting my card. I think it's not unfair. It's not fair. And we have a lot of people now. When you get to the head office now, confusion here and there. You go there, they ask you to come to Ewa. Look at the number of people here now. And they are now giving us a deadline. Like Madam Theresa, Anthony and Nelson want the Bank of Ghana to extend the deadline for linking one's card to his or her account. Yes, there should be an extension, at least at, at the close of the, the year. There should, there should be an extension because it doesn't, what they are doing is, is, is unfair. I mean, the deadline has to be extended up to even the end of the year. But will there be an extension for Ma Theresa and all other people struggling to access their Ghana cards? Only time will tell. For Joy News, from the Elwak Stadium, I am Samuel Kojobrace.
This is Johnny Spram with me and Esmenu. The superimposing Golden Tulip Kumasi City Hotel is rebranding to Lancaster Kumasi City. This comes after Aqua Holdings operating as Lancaster Hotels took over from Golden Tulip Hotel as the new uh, leaseholders. Lab News Visit shows most branding materials have been changed to reflect the new order. Management says the name change will not affect the operations of the company. And now, Juma joins me via Zoom with more on this. And now, describe to us the mood at the uh, premises of the hotel when you visited. So this afternoon, um, when I visited the hotel, it's a very calm afternoon. Um, all the staff at the hotel going about their normal um, duties. Now, the only change is that immediately you enter um, the entry, you get to the entrance of the hotel, you realize that there are some people changing the branding materials, that's the, the, the signpost in front of the hotel to, re to reflect the change in name of the hotel. Um, most of the doorposts and other areas have been rebranded to um, Lancaster Hotel, um, indicating that there's been a change in the name of the hotel. Um, the, the only thing that uh, they are yet to work on is um, the biggest branding of Golden Tulip in, 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 and that is uh, mounted on top of the hotel building itself. That is what they are here to work on. But um, speaking to the management and um, the management at the hotel, um, from all indications, it is possible that by the close of tomorrow, this will, will be changed to reflect the new owners or the, um, the, the name change of the hotel. Uh, usually with such changes in either management or branding or, or shareholders or leaseholders, uh, there's some agi agitation among the staff. Uh, you have been speaking to some of them. What did they tell you? So I got in touch with the top officials of the hotel. And um, what they've been saying is that since they had this information earlier, they've been speaking to all the staff and assuring them that they are going to keep their jobs. So this, mo this morning through throughout the day when I visited the area, it, it looks like everybody at the hotel, including the staff, with the top and um, the officials below, have accepted the change in name and they believe that they will get to keep their jobs as um, they have been assured by the top officials of the company. Thank you very much, Nanel, for bringing us those details uh, from Kumasi. And uh, thank yes, you for your company throughout the week. We have more stories on myjawline.com. Beverly standing by with the latest in business. From me and the rest of the team, have a great weekend.